a formal letter of request. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name. Politics is our game. Look, this is the show, folks, that Barack Obama appeared on six times from 2000 to 2004. It gave us some credibility. But mainly, that's because we have, as our guest today, Dan Showman, the man who worked with Barack Obama as a consultant and campaign manager for nine years, from 1996, excuse me, 1990, 1997 to 2006. And he will be working on the campaign to reelect, right? That's right. And I used to drive him up to the show when you were on Tower Road. So I was uh, here several times, and I know he enjoyed doing your show. And he's a good guy. We may agree with Brock, we may disagree with him, but I don't know anybody who really thinks he's not a good guy. Well, people that ask that question, the answer is, I can't define somebody good or not, but Barack feels guilt, he has a conscience, and he feels guilt. So, okay, if he has a conscience and he feels guilt, Dan Showman, what went wrong with the Barack Obama presidency? Because clearly something happened. He's been president here for three and a half years. He was supposed to be post-racial, post-political, right? I knew Brock, and you know, you knew Brock, and partly why, look, let's be blunt. He was known as a non-scary black, okay? There are blacks who are in politics who are scary to whites, and there are whites in politics who are scary to blacks. Barack Obama transcended race, that's what was said. He transcended politics. Is there anybody now who thinks, three and a half years into the Barack Obama presidency, that he transcends race, that Barack Obama transcends politics? Well, I think he still has transcended race. I think, if anything, you could argue that, his, that he has run a presidency that has been n so non-racial oriented. So I think on that issue, he, he gets kudos. When it comes to the transforming politics. Transcending politics. Transcending politics, I think the economy has, has beaten him down. There are, some, there are some areas that I think he could have done better but he's been a victim of a, of a vicious beating by the economy and by Republicans. And I, and I go door to door, I've been door to door in the last year working on campaigns, and generally the sentiment is, Obama has done okay, but they shouldn't beat him up so hard. I think that's what Americans think. So the question is, if the continuing Republican strategy over the next se se six months is to beat the heck out of Obama, and the same thing with, with, uh, with, Pres with Romney, is that going to be effective? I don't think so. Well, but to be fair now, there are people who would say, you say that they don't want people beating up on him unfairly, okay? And when it comes to transcending politics, true, the economy has not gone well. It may have even been much more difficult than he anticipated. Mm -hmm. But he did make promises. He did say in February of 2009, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, Barack Obama said, look, I've got this $800 billion stimulus program. Right. I want you folks to pass it. I'm sent, he sent out Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid to pass it. Barack took hands off. He even let them shape it, and some would say, mm -hmm. to his detriment. But he said, pass this legislation, and unemployment won't, inc won't exceed 8%. Did right. he say that? Well, let me tell you what happened with the stimulus, and I think there are some weaknesses to the stimulus. On the clean energy side, it is so, the federal government is Excuse so restrictive. Excuse me just for a second, Dan. You get plenty of time to explain, and I sure. won't interrupt, but did he say that? Did he say in February of 2009, did this President was, Obama say, pass the stimulus and unemployment won't exceed 8%? He, as far as I remember, he said, pass the stimulus, it'll create this many jobs. I, I thought he said, I don't unemployment remember won't did. exceed 8%. Are you saying you just don't know, or you don't think he said that? I don't remember. Okay. There's so certain things okay. I do remember. Okay. Uh, that's not one Fair of them. Fair enough. Okay. But I will say that the stimulus package had some weaknesses, and let, let me tell you one of them. Uh, on the clean energy side, I think the environmentalists sold him that they could create these jobs. The problem is the federal government was so restrictive you know, on the, on the different projects that they couldn't get funding. So the clean energy stuff didn't work enough. There wasn't enough vertical... But they couldn't get funding for what? Uh, there was very little, very little of the clean energy funding was released because of the restrictive federal standards. By the EPA? No, the EPA and the federal agencies, which is why it's so surprising they're, they're about Solyndra. They were his agencies. But, but, he but, was the president of the United but, but States. These were, but these he were appointed his, people to EPA. They were he his regulations. I mean, it's very difficult. He couldn't, to, he couldn't, 
get projects done because of his regulations. I think you could say that maybe they didn't change the regulations enough when they did it. It's possible. I'm, I'm just saying I think that the clean energy thing didn't work the way Couldn't it was supposed Couldn't he get waivers? To. Couldn't he? I mean, he's president of the United States, and didn't he have a majority in the House and Senate when I, he was elected? I, I'm not going to tell you why. It, I'm just going to say I don't think it created the number of jobs it should have. I think also they could have done more with vertical construction instead of just highway construction because the trades, the labor trades, the 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 unions you mean have really going suffered up by vertical. You mean buildings going the up, hospitals, as opposed to just roads, hospitals, schools. You must have paved every road from Wilmette to Los Angeles back to New York, and right? that did help. But it didn't well, do I don't what, know. right. Think, yes, and so Those now aren't what we call high-paying skilled right. jobs, right? But, but the new stimulus he's trying to do is focused on infrastructure, road, infrastructure, and police officers and and cops. But he's and not. Firefighters. Going, he has no credibility now because he did say. I I heard him say this down. I heard him say in February 2009, passed the stimulus, unemployment was below 8%, it won't go above. They passed the stimulus, it went above 8%, went above 9%, went above 10%. Right. It is only now, three and a half years later, almost come down to 8%, not quite. Okay? I mean, well, they I, mean I had a guy, a, I had a guy Nick Bogert. Do you know Nick Bogert? No. He's an MSNBC, NBC, currently mm -hmm. freelance journalist. He was sitting here just last week in your chair. And I said, who wins, Obama or Romney? Nick Bogart, pretty fair. He's not somebody who people would say strongly right, strongly left. He said, tell me where unemployment will be. I said, right. I'm guessing 8.1%. He said, if that happens, it's going to be tough for Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So unemployment now went to 8.1, and I think last month it ticked up. Right. Instead of continuing to go down, it's gone up, I think, to 8.2. The small change, but that's important. As you know in politics, the trend. Right. So my point is, well, but, but my point is, he didn't deliver on that. We've had much on higher unemployment for the last three and a half years. The the recovery is much less robust than any other in recent history. You know, you want to compare to Bush in two thousand one to two thousand three, stronger recovery. Well, you want but, to compare to Reagan eighty one to eighty three, stronger recovery. You want to compare to Clinton. 91 to 93, stronger recovery. But you're Barack now, Obama has the weakest recovery in recent years. But you're years. ignoring, Jeff, the situation in the world around us. You know, part of the problem with America is we think we're an insular society. So now we're going to blame the world around us? Well, but the reason why Obama had that press conference on Friday was to talk about the issues in Europe. It, America is not is one of only many countries. It's far worse in Europe, and I've spent a lot of time in Europe. I do a lot of work in Eastern Dan, Europe. Dan, and you let know, me tell this you, is not the right strategy. I'm, I, you, I'm not saying that. Dan, I, I'm not employing a strategy. But you're, I'm just but you're, you, you know government. You've been in government. Right, right? but you, you're calling. You for know a, politics. You're calling for a robust recovery. The robust. It's different. It's different times now than in don't the past think, when we had robust don't you recoveries. Think it's not the way to run for president. Forget whether it's right or wrong. Okay, I hate to say it, but put aside the truth for the moment. Let's just talk politics. Is it a good strategy to run for president to say, you know what, folks, things have been worse than I anticipated, no. and the world has a mess, and right. so they've got problems, and that's why I didn't do what I said, but go ahead and elect me anyway, because somehow life will be different. People say, well, okay, if the world is the problem and you couldn't deal with it, you mm -hmm. couldn't cope, we're not going to make you president well, of the United States again. Do, am I right? Yeah, but that's a wrong strategy. No, Why is he doing that? He needs to articulate. Do I have to tell everybody how to do things here? <laughs> ben, <laughs> come on on. We'll talk to Ben LeBeau. Now do I get to answer the question? Yes, go ahead. Sorry. He needs to articulate a clear strategy right. going forward. I think they're saying that about Romney, too. I think both of them in the next five, six months have to articulate a clear strategy or they will lose. And I think that uh, him running against Bain Capital maybe a, a part of it, or, or, or Romney running against Obama's record, but they have to articulate what's going to happen no, in the next four years. No, it was the wrong years. strategy. Bill Clinton didn't agree with it. I uh, heard he didn't agree. Cory Booker didn't agree with right, it. Right, I heard he didn't Virtually agree. Virtually nobody agreed with it. I mean, did David it's a, Axelrod it's a, agree with it's it? A part, it's a part of the strategy. It's not the whole strategy. Do you and think Obama it, has to have a good economic plan coming forward in the next six months that people believe in that makes sense. But isn't the problem is that he's not running for president. This is not 2008. It was fine to have a good plan in the fall of 2000. But he is running for president. No, but he's running for re-election. Correct. He has to explain what went wrong. I started that question. Let me ask you again. Yes. What, what went, went wrong? What went wrong with the Obama presidency? What went wrong is a much worse economy than expected, an international economic crisis of nuclear proportions, the worst it's been in my lifetime. I, know, I don't know about your lifetime. You're just a couple years older than me, but the worst it's ever been. Um, 
a, a, a focus on health care in the first two years, which was his strategy, which was his campaign platform, and was the number one issue six years ago. Was that a mistake to focus on health care? It wasn't, because six years ago it was the number one issue in this country. There are country. people who tell me, and you know there have been a spate of books written about some good, some not so good, written about the Obama presidency. Yes, there have been There's some good There's some who, who suggest that this was the girl, so to speak. This was Valerie Jarrett, this was Michelle Obama, this was others saying, you know what, health care is the most important thing. But it was the other, most important thing. There were other the advisors, I think, like Larry Summers, who would probably say focus on the economy. I wasn't there. I've only read about some of this. He, Barack Obama is the decision maker, okay, as Bush would say. George W. Bush was the decision mm -hmm. maker. Barack Obama is the decision maker. Did he make the wrong decision? Should he have in the first two years not focused on health care, but focused on the economy? No, and here's why. Six years ago, health care was the number one issue, especially in a Democratic primary. That's number one. Number two is he knew health care. Six years ago, in 2006. Yes, know? and when he started running. Number two, he knew, he knew health care. He was a health care leader in the state Senate when I worked with him, and the U.S. Senate. So he understood the, the implications of Medicaid, the implications of health insurance, the complexities of health care. Number three, he grew up, he lived in, in, and worked in a very urban area where health care, where there's a health care crisis in America, whether it's obesity, whether it's uh, diabetes, things like this in the black community. So he understood the issue. So I think he focused on an issue and he, and he followed through on that pledge to blame him for that, little did he know that, that the economy would slip so quickly, but a lot of which happened during well, Bush. Is he a big enough guy to say possibly he made a mistake? You've given all the reasons why it was rational. Is he a big for, enough guy to say You gave mean, all the reasons, excuse me, why it was rational. Mm -hmm. I think you made a cogent, rational right. argument for why it was rational for Barack Obama to make right. the decision he made. But as it turned out, as you said, the economy was in worse shape than he anticipated. Right. The, the hill to climb was higher than he anticipated. Did he make a mistake in the sense that if he had focused on the economy, he might have realized earlier the hurdles he was facing? And number two, should he have stayed more involved? What's the By out, He outsourced, everybody says this, he outsourced the stimulus to Harry Reid and to Nancy Pelosi. They did a lot of their social priorities, their constituent spending, their patronage, not so much stimulus, a lot of payback for their friends. If Obama had said, we're That's your opinion. We, well, that, not just my opinion. A well, lot of people I mean, say this. And, and, and the point is, look, I know Barack Obama. In a way, it's not blaming Barack. Maybe, maybe the president should outsource things like that. Maybe he has to delegate. I'm not saying that's wrong. But why are you so dwelling on whether he made a mistake or not? I because mean, why is, because, why is because maybe, so, I'm just, because I think... Are you saying it's a mistake in judgment? Yeah, I'm saying maybe, maybe the way to do it. I'm not telling you how to do your business. Again, you do government, you do mm. politics, you travel. You're the one who traveled 5,000 miles with Barack from 1997 right. to 2006. I don't know anybody else who did that. You know Barack, but I thought I know him. You know him much better than I do. Okay, okay? I agree. Probably better than anybody else, okay? Right. So knowing that, Maybe you would be the person to talk with him and say, you know what, the American public, they believe in a second chance, a second mm -hmm. act. If you go to them and you say, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes, the world is a problem. Yes, Europe is a problem. Yes, Spain is a problem and all those. But I made a mistake. I should have focused on the economy. You've got my attention now. I'm gonna, here's what we're going to do. I think he's do. done that. I haven't, heard him say, said, I haven't heard him say, He said, I'm focused on the economy now. I haven't well, heard him but say. I don't see the point in doing that, Jeff. Well, you know, they, you they, they, ask Bush, they, say, they always ask Bush, when he was president, work. do you ever say he made a mistake? And he never would. Because, you know would, why? Because the, the, the America doesn't reward people for being honest when it comes to the media. You have to say. Maybe they do. Maybe well, you're wrong he, on that, he, he in I, essence, I reward people for being but honest. But he, in essence, did say that he he probably should have done it quicker, focused on the economy quicker. He's made that point. I think he said that many a time, and That's I'll find you the That's almost the same as saying I made a mistake. So the, why did you say why are you drawing on the mistake aspect? Because, because it's a way of, we're it's trying a way to look of forward. speak. Yeah, because it's a way of saying, here's what I did wrong, and here's what I'm going to do but in he's the future. Free, but but, but Jeff, you're, you're missing some points. You're missing points about the auto industry. Uh, he's done a great job on the auto industry. A lot has of private he? sector has jobs he? have you been created. You know, that's what they call crony capitalism. 
Well, I mean, you, you know, know about for, crony capital. For GM, right? Ford, Chrysler, how can you say he has done a good job on the auto because industry? Because there are people who say they're they, one of the few industries. They went into there. bankruptcy, but it was a structured bankruptcy. Right. And a lot of Barack Obama's friends in labor were rewarded in the management of GM. Sure. And people say that's crony capitalism. He should have let them go into bankruptcy, let them come that's out. That's what Mitt Romney wanted, right? No, not let them go and, like, goodbye, we hope you work it out. Go through bankruptcy. Don't restructure to help your friends, the unions. Say, Barack Obama, I want you folks going into bankruptcy. I want you coming out. I want you, I believe in you. I think you can become a strong company, but I'm going to take hands off here because I don't want to get people saying, I'm doing this for my friends. I'm doing it for Detroit. I'm doing it for Los Angeles. Okay. I'm doing it for but you. Let me make you this see point. the difference? Yeah, but let me make this point to all you people that have those positions. When the airline industries went into, went into bankruptcy and they created a two-tier pension system and they screwed the f future workers, do we have a better airline industry, Jeff? Can we you tell a, me that do have the air service we, is better it than is, it was before? It is better than we're it was We're paying more years. money. No, we're not It's a monopolized money. process. It's not yes, a it is. In the it's last five years, I can skip some of my bills. The point is, no, no. Anybody the point who is this, we, Dan, uh, anybody who studied this, including Alfred Kahn. We're making the best Alfred cars Kahn was in the a guy, world. Excuse me, Alfred Kahn was a guy who led deregulation of the airlines under who? Under Carter in 1979. That's right, it was under Alfred Kahn is no right winger. He's basically a Democrat. But we had over the last 30 years, if you track this, Dan, if you track it, 30 years, airline rates have come down considerably, real rates. People with low incomes can now travel and fly much more than they could before. They, they, they went down and now they went shooting way back not up now. in the last no, year. They are still And lower. not only that, there's a they monopoly still lower, and there's much less And there's less not flights. a monopoly. There are all sorts of airlines coming in constantly. They go out, they come in, competition. If we had that in the school system, let's change the topic a little bit. If we had that in the school system, that kind of competition, schools failing and we're going out of business. We're starting to have that with charter schools. We're having a lot more, yeah. and I do work in the charter. I understand the charter school area, and I do work, right. and I think there is more competition. How many more charter schools do we have three and a half year, years later? There's a to, lot in Chicago. Me, due to the Barack Obama presidency, because here's a man who said he supported charter schools. He said this and I think sitting in the right here where you're sitting. And I think in the legislature he did. And, and so the question is, as president of the United States, talk about leadership. How many more charter schools do we have? How many more low-income people have choices that they wouldn't otherwise have because Barack Obama has led the way in leadership for more charter schools around the country? Well, let me tell you one thing that he is doing, and that is you talk about education. And one of the big issues coming up in the next couple of weeks is trying to save the student loan issue. And we have middle class people in Dan, your viewing Dan, area Dan. that are strangled. It's the poor people that are I dying. I, the middle no, class, it's the middle class people that are dying. To paraphrase Mitt Romney, the middle class people and the high income people can take care of themselves. Dan, when you're out of a people, job and you're trying to pay the people who, pay. The mo who need the help the most, you should know this. The people who need help the most are people who are locked into failing public schools, who are learning how to read, write, and do math. Right, and that's why we've been. And I'm going to help a guy who can read, write, and do math, but he doesn't want to pay 8%. He should only pay 4%. Because that's the guy who needs the help? Because the way oh, the, give the way me a the, break. The way that who the cares about the poor people? I got to be, I got to be the guy? Look, the problem Barack is. Barack Obama and Dan Showman don't care about poor people? I got to be the guy? You know, I, I think, if you, are you defending raising the student loan rates? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing what Mitt you're Romney doing. should do and say, you know, if if you care about helping low-income mm -hmm. people, if you care about helping minorities, mm -hmm. when we help those people in the city of Chicago who are in failing public schools, mm -hmm. one out of every two kids, when we help people who are like at Dodge School, they are reading at 10% of the kids are learning how to read, when we take care of all of those, Dan, mm -hmm. okay, we're triaging the system, right. when we give school choice, when we don't close the schools as Barack Obama and Arne Duncan did in D.C., when they had school vouchers and 7,500 kids, or I don't know how many, were getting $7,500 per kid per year, and they were doing well, mm -hmm. and there were African Americans and other minorities who were being right. helped, when we help all of those people and it's done, then I'll start turning to that poor guy. You know, it's like that woman at Georgetown <laughs> Law School who complained and moaned. Yeah, because she couldn't get birth control pills paid for by somebody else. Here's a woman who's going to be making $150,000 next year, and she wants the she wants the Constitution of the United States, the First Amendment, ripped up. Kind mm -hmm. of ironic for a, for a law student at Georgetown, mm -hmm. so she can get free birth control pills. And Dan, now you're sounding like a right wing conservative, Jeff. No, I'm sounding like somebody <laughs> who cares about poor people. Do I care more about this woman at Georgetown? getting free birth control pills 
or do I care more about the kids in the city of Chicago, in Detroit, but that in New York the City? Issue. And no, that is the issue. The issue there was the Catholic. I only have so, I much, the issue was I only have so much time if I'm President of the United States. If I'm Barack Obama and I'm Dan Showman, I can put my time into helping the Georgetown woman who wants to get free birth control pills mm -hmm. and is going to be making $150,000 a year next year, mm -hmm. or I can help the kids in the city of Chicago who are learn, learning how to read, write, do math, who've got one parent, who've got gangs shooting around them. Mm -hmm. Where should my time go? Dan. Well, I think that, that that's the Georgetown woman or the kids well, who are Well, when you when you're I'm going with the kids when you're who are presenting that option. What is Mitt Romney's plan for the inner city? I hope it's school choice, school vouchers. It, I hope it's and, charter and school schools. School choice alone will not solve solve our society. It's a damn Ills. good start. It's a damn good if start. If you think that's going to solve our, if the kids don't have enough food to go to school, right now they, we've been, they we've have, been giving them food stomachs. for the last 20 years, but we we've been putting them in failing schools. So let's try giving them food. And there's nothing inconsistent, Dan. Like I'm for, I'm you for can school. have you can have you can have vouchers and give kids. I am food. for school choice. I think that there and I think the charter school schools vouchers, are good. School I'm not choice? necessarily for vouchers, you, but because I think, you know because you I know Dan, in your, you know in your heart they're right, but you can't do it. Barack Obama said okay. here in June 27, 2002. When, not in that, in that chair, but not in the studio, of we were in Maneka, the, as you know, because you helped get him there. Yes, correct. What did he say? He said, Jeff, I will do anything. I will do anything that will improve the quality of education for the kids in the, in the inner city. He said, mm -hmm. those conditions are intolerable. And I said, even school vouchers, school of choice. And you know mm -hmm. what he said, Dan? He said, everything has to be on the table. A year later, I asked him when he was now a declared candidate for the U.S. Senate in the Democratic primary. What do you thought about that? And then he said, you know, Jeff, exactly. I'm against school vouchers. It was the saddest moment in my life to see Barack Obama say something that wasn't true because I could have played him that tape as he well, said. Well, I don't remember, but you can play me the tape afterwards. Okay, but you that. see the point? Barack Obama is, was Richard Nixon who went to China. Barack Obama, bi biracial, transcended politics, transcended race, could have said to the unions, I'm sorry, I can't support you on this one. We're going to have school voucher school choice because I care so much about the kids in the city of Chicago who aren't learning to read and write. That, and you know, it's not too late. It's not too late, Dan. He's president at least for, what, six more months, mm -hmm. eight more months, and he might be president, yeah, you just told he might me, be president for, next, for the next four you years. You just told me the reason why the Republicans aren't going to give him any passage of any bills because he has no credibility their purpose of passing, not passing any of his current stimulus package is because they don't want to, the economy to improve before challenge the election. Dan, 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 that is what people them. don't like. Dan, Dan challenge don't like If that. he came out with school vouchers, school choice legislation, proposed legislation, I would like to see the Republican who stood up and said, I oppose that. Because you know what? I'd be on that guy's ass every day of the but week. But is that going to create jobs right now? Yeah. I mean, because then yeah. they would say the media would criticize them for not creating no, no. jobs. Dan. People would be then teaching, people who could teach in these in schools who aren't certified, but who, as you know, have a history major, a math major, mm -hmm. all sorts of new jobs. In fact, teacher jobs. Right. Barack Obama wants to help well, teachers. He had a lot of, oh, this would be teacher oh, jobs. Obama had some okay. innovative education stuff, Race to the Top, which was a yeah, program. It didn't work. Dan. Well, I hate it, to say it, 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 it didn't and, work. And then some of the other programs were cut by the Republicans. Okay. So they had a lot of other Dan, education don't stuff. Whine. The Republicans play politics. I understand that. Yes. I'm not. I'm fair and balanced here. I'm not here to defend Republicans. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to defend anybody. Don't whine. Deal with the situation. Take up my challenge. Have Barack Obama. I know you talk with him. Mm -hmm. I know you can say, you know, this would startle people. Barack right. Obama is taking on the unions. He's coming out for school voucher, school choice. That would get their attention. He's still not going to neglect the economy. He's going to look for free market ways to boost the economy. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm trying to tell you get Barack Ob let Barack Obama if be I Barack was, Obama. That's if all I'm saying. I was 100 percent convinced that a voucher only system would work. If school choice works. Dan, does have it, it, does have it. its benefits. Milton Friedman. There yeah. we go. Yeah. We'll see when we get there. Milton Friedman. Okay. <laughs> Capitalism, Capitalism and freedom. And freedom. Yes. This man proposed vouchers. I think in 1952, maybe 1962, mm -hmm. 50 to 60 years ago. They work. They worked in D.C. They worked in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They worked in Florida. They worked in Milwaukee. You want to read this book? They worked in Milwaukee? You want to work? Yes, they the did. The vouchers, the public yes. education it's system? It's still going. They're are, we still, talk, are we going to talk about the Wisconsin you, Have election? you read that book? I, I have not read it, but I will, I will, not? Re, I didn't will read get it my in high school? copy. I read the other one, Free to Choose. Free, you, read free to uh, choose. you read Milton Friedman's Free to Choose in yes. high school? What was that high school? Uh, it's called Jesuit College Prep in it Dallas, was a good Texas. School. It's a good school. Right? It was. It was. Send good. them money, everybody. Wait, Here it's it's Jesuit. Up Where is Milwaukee. that? What's the name of the school? Why don't we talk about Wisconsin? Okay. If the voucher system. Wait a second. But you're, you took the book. You're going to read it, right? 
If you want me to take it, I will. You'll I read can it? buy it on my own copy okay. if you want. You'll do it and you'll give us a book report? Uh, Did you know that Milton Friedman suggested and proposed and sort of invented school vouchers in 1962? Did you know that? That's fine. Let's talk about Milwaukee, though. No, but did you know that he did that? Yes. Okay. And you're going to think about it. You'll give it a fair shot. I will. Because you're, you are somebody I respect. I will read the because book. Because you give ideas a fair if shot. If you want me to read the book, I will read the okay. book. Okay. Okay. But let me talk about vouchers in Milwaukee. Sure. This, this relates to Wisconsin. One of the reasons why I'm We're all, be, We only got about 10 minutes left, so okay, we but, can do it. It's your, it's your nickel. Be, I'm going to be critical okay. of... The Republican or the Democratic candidate in the recall election, the mayor of Milwaukee, Tom Barrett, did not do a good job of taking care of his city and the African American community. Thirty percent unemployment among blacks, uh, loss of factory jobs. Yes, and so, so he was not a good candidate for the governor point is the voucher not a good system. Mayor of Milwaukee. The voucher system is not working in Milwaukee. The public schools are terrible. Oh no, no, the black no, population. No, the voucher system is working they're fine. They're not preparing black the voucher students. Voucher system. No, they're not preparing. What black evidence students do you have that the voucher system is not working? Thirty percent black unemployment. No, no, that you can't blame that on vouchers. Well, then, the but vouch- if you're saying this is going to create an no, economic. No, it's, it's a very is, small. It's a very small and. They are cutting back. The Democrats and the teachers unions are cutting back on the program. Correct. But to the, the point extent is the program been, exists, to the extent it's allowed to compete, it is working. It's gotten worse and worse in Milwaukee. The, this, the economic Milwaukee has, situation. but not the vouchers have gotten better and better. But my the point is, it's not, it's not solving are learning societal how to, ills. You can't, if you, if you, because you only have what five or ten percent of the kids. Look, Dan. I'm criticizing a Democrat here. You wanted me to give. I'm trying yeah, to be but, fair. Yeah, but criticize the Democrat for not expanding the school voucher program. If you want to criticize the, the Democrat for doing that, don't blame a program that hits 10 percent of the kids and say it didn't cure everything for the 90 other percent that it doesn't hit. You well, see I'm the just point? okay. You okay. wanted to move on. All right, we do. We do have to move on. Go ahead. We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, Dan Showman. Dan, so much, thank you so much for coming I'm out a, here. I'm, I was glad to be here. Thank we you. We didn't have enough Are time. Are we done? Nope. we still got a few more minutes left, okay, so let's good. just keep going. Let's just hit foreign issues here. Do they matter? Does Iraq, Afghanistan, right now, Syria, does it matter in the election? Probably. I don't think so right now. It's all, it's all, it's the economy stupid. It should matter, but I think... It's the right economy in, stupid. Pretty much. Barack yeah. Obama is going to win this. I think this. foreign issues matter as it affects the economy. Barack Obama will win this or lose this, depending on whether he can persuade people. He kept, as he's saying, things from getting worse than they would have been if he didn't have his stimulus program, his bailout program, and if he can persuade people, he's got some insights to the next four years as to how to turn this economy around. If he can persuade people, he can do a better job than Mitt Romney. Well, they but affect the economy. The re- this is a referendum on Barack Obama, right? Right, but they affect referendum the referendum on Barack Obama. Do you agree is, with but that? Yes. David Axelrod would it, agree with me on that, right? I think it's a referendum you know David. on Barack would you Obama. Agree with me on that? But I think they're going to try to run. I think the, the referendum on Mitt Romney is applicable and is a factor. It's not just a referendum on Obama. It's also a referendum on Romney. You can't turn it around. It is a referendum. If people if think, can't, if if he people can't think Barack, his record, if Barack's not doing well, then the next question they ask, can Romney do better? But the first right. question, the threshold question, is Barack doing well? Because if you can get them to answer yes, okay. they never think about me. Correct. If, he, you, if, you if, if the economy was booming and he had a yes, then that wouldn't be the so issue. They, so they it say, is a no, referendum on Obama. <laughs> And he's losing that. Now they say, "Can Mitt do better?" That's your opinion. If no. the answer is, it's, if the answer is, he's not doing, he's not doing perfectly. Then. And he he did he didn't he didn't he was control 47 the in the country and ju- it was a democratic it, legislature. Well, I mean, but that's my point. When you is, say he slashed spending the legislature, I suppose. But my point is, how can you go back and say and look at his record and say that he's some great job creator? He created wealth for the partners of Bain Capital. No, no, he doesn't have a now record you're of job creation. conflating what he was doing in the private sector with what he was doing as governor. Well, and and in the private sector, in the governor, he did a terrible in job the private creating sector, jobs. Would you tell Barack this? There is no job called job creator. Would you tell him that? There is a job saying in the private sector, if you try to do things that, that, that improve the situation for your shareholders and your employees and your customers, you will create jobs. But you don't go out and try to create jobs. You try to take a company. Correct. You try to take a I'm company. I'm a small businessman. You, you try, try to, to take money. a company that's not doing well. Correct. And you try to do better. Correct. The invisible hand. You understand the invisible hand? Right. Adam Smith says it's as if there was an invisible hand pushing you. It's your own greed. But it's the your greed, of- Dan. It's your greed that motivates you. But when you try to do well for your clients, 
If you're if satisfying you business, your clients, you you're satisfying your, your customers, and, you, right. and if you do well for your customers, you make money. Right, okay? but, the whole, but the whole purpose So that's of how a free market works. It doesn't, people don't go out to create jobs. They go out and try to meet the demand of some their customers. Do, some people are If they meet the demand of their customers well, then they create jobs. Some people are in business to create jobs no. and to help create. No. Those like people a, seldom do. Those people well, are I think called, there's more than they're you called think. government employees. No, no, no. Like the small now business, you're, the small now business it's your judgment. Are, I'm a small business person that cares no, about the, the jobs No, the small business administration. Create. How many jobs has the small business administration created, the SBA? Uh, a lot in this no, last couple of years, no, and they've no. given out hundreds Relative of thousands Relative to what they cost, yeah, in terms of financing that agency, in terms of taxes, they I think took it's jobs cr away. critical. It's a net job loss. It's, it's a net a, job I disagree. I think that there's a lot of data to back that up. Small business administration, give me a break. I mean, there's, there's, he's, they've given out hundreds of thousands of loans in this administration, and I've got some data to back up the fact that they've been successful. Does Barack Obama believe in the free market? Uh, yes. Does he think it's, it actually is a good institution? Does he think it's something that, if left alone, will do wonders? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Does he is he coming around to what others are saying now that 